to the mindful musings of two spiritual mamas. We are Alicia and Shelby here to share our 20 years of authentic friendship, life experiences, and acquired wisdom. Infused with love and intention, our episodes will inspire those who are ready to shift their soul path into alignment with its divine purpose. We will discuss alternative approaches to life's traditional pathways, leaving you with tools in your spiritual toolbox to navigate everyday moments. Knowing and embodying the empowered self on a daily basis is one of the most valuable practices you can adopt. Understanding that you are surrounded by a network of support, both physically and spiritually, will carry you into the next phase of your divine purpose. You are not alone on this journey. We recognize we're on a spiritual path, navigating our day-to-day lives. And in this podcast, we'll share with you our organic thoughts as we grow and blossom together. Welcome to episode six with two spiritual mamas. I am Alicia. And I'm Shelby. And today we're talking about how we can observe our thoughts and our words with discernment. Yes, discernment is such a wonderful tool to stick in your back pocket and it's like a filter to run your um, ideas, thoughts, interactions with people through. So this episode, oh, we have sponsors now, Alicia. This episode is sponsored by the throat chakra. (laughs) (laughs) So today, uh, we'll get into that a little bit more, but today we are going to chat about reframing our own self-talk, noticing and witnessing the way that we talk outwardly to our children, um, our families, our spouses, our partners, even our fellow um, employees or employers. Uh, We're going to share some ideas about how to shift that and find a little bit better alignment and not be stuck in the negatives, and um, hopefully to see ourselves on this path of faith and belief versus a a darker light of doubt, fear, and judgment, which can often dictate us um, quite strongly in this world. Yes, we will definitely go over how to catch yourself when you're noticing you're coming from that place, either fearful or judging yourself or others, doubting yourself. This is going to be a good one. It is. So let's talk about that throat chakra. Um, In our systems, we have the chakra system. And this is our fifth chakra. And it's blue. So if you wanted to imagine that uh, illuminating blue colors right now. As we talk about Carolyn Mace quite a bit, she really inspired me quite a few years ago with her book, The Anatomy of the Spirit. The way that she um, connected confession with the throat chakra. Um, not sure if I've ever mentioned this, but I was raised Catholic. And so this really resonated with me in a level of understanding um, how to shift that. Because confession to me is like getting the guilt off of your off of your back, you know, confessing your sins and, and then being judged by your sins. And with the chakra systems and my interpretation of it, I had to go to bed at night and confess to myself, did I speak beautiful words today or would I be, I don't know if ashamed is the right word, but would I be disappointed in what I said, even if it was in a private conversation with a friend, you know, because um, energy has its, has its power and its value, this emotional dagger kind of a concept that we'll get into a little bit later. So This idea of the throat chakra and keeping it clear, keeping it healthy. Um, I went through a lot of past life trauma with um, my throat chakra as well, keeping it um, held back um, by a collar. I think this whole concept that we're going through right now with COVID and the masking and silencing ourselves is really something to be conscious of at this time too. So speaking with clarity, authenticity, positivity, and faith is where I try to align myself with every day, whether I'm talking to my friends, teaching my students, talking to my staff. So owning that and going to bed at night and saying, yeah, 
I did. I did a good job. And you know what? If I had to write out everything I said out loud today, I would, I'd be okay if my grandma saw it. (laughs) (laughs) There might be a couple of bombs in there, but she's okay with that. (laughs) She's in heaven anyway. (laughs) (laughs) On the other side. On the other side. Yes. And it is such a powerful chakra because our voice can be such a source of empowerment. And, Mm. and that's what we want to focus on is how can we empower ourselves? How can we feel that integrity and use our discernment? And I'm going to bring in the four agreements because if, if our listeners have not read that book, I would highly recommend Don Miguel Ruiz. He wrote the four agreements and many other books that we've used, I honestly will say it's been like my Bible. Yeah. And and I was raised in a Christian household, uh, but also we were very spiritual and multicultural in our viewpoints of philosophy and bringing all of that in. But the first agreement in those four agreements is be impeccable with your word. And that word impeccable is Mm -hmm. challenging to imagine that we could be in this level of perfection. And it really is the most difficult of the four agreements to honor, but it's about how significant it is to speak with integrity and how we can carefully choose our words before we say them out loud. Mm -hmm. And if we say them incorrectly, we can readjust them. You know, and absolutely. Realign. Actually, my partner and I catch each other in our language, and I know Shelby, mm-hmm. you and I will will bring it to each other's attention if I notice some of your language or your words are self deprecating, or I'll say something mm-hmm. about, "Oh, I made my son take out the garbage," and my partner will say, "Did you make him or did you ask him?" Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like these little things. And if we change them to a higher vibrational frequency of awareness, then we're going to live with more ease and have, well, we're going to speak with more clarity and more about what we mean than this pre-programmed way of, of seeing the world that maybe not, is not what we, how we want to be in the world. And I love that you brought in the higher vibration. That's actually the definition of discernment. Um, we were just reading it. Uh, we did a, a card draw as we do it before every <laughs> every episode. And it was the fifth ray of intellectual knowledge. And it really talked about how discernment is tuning in to the highest frequency that you're on. So if you are tuning into a lower frequency, you're not going to be in alignment with yourself. I've got a beautiful quote I found on social media by Miriam Hasna. She says, I am forgiving myself for those times I didn't listen to my discernment because I was afraid I was judging. And this shows the difference between discernment and judgment. Mm -hmm. And I think exactly what you said, Shelby, that discernment is feeling into, is this in alignment? Does this feel like I've had to use discernment in relationships? Is this really in alignment with my vibrational frequency? Is this person in alignment? Are my words in alignment? And judgment is a different thing. Judgment is from an outside perspective, looking at yourself, choosing whether you're good or bad most of the Mm -hmm. time, right? Mm -hmm. Is that how you would say it? Well, I actually come from a world where judging is a part of of my daily life in gymnastics. So it's It's not always negative. That's for sure. There is a light and a shadow side to all of these archetypal energies. And, you know, even yesterday, my daughter said to me, why do we have to get graded on everything, mom? And I was like, well, honey, think about why do you get a a score on your floor routine. It's so you can become better. So you can see where you sit and become better. So there is a place for judgment, um, but it has to be positive in in a healing way that we're judging each other. I don't, I, I, that would be my best definition of how to use judgment positively. Uh, then we all, I think, are familiar with the negative judgment where we just just disregard ourselves so quickly, you know, that I'm going to fail at that. I'm, I, I'm not good enough for that. You know, why should I even try? You know, I suck. Like that, that's the judgment that we want to 
disregard. We want to flush that stuff <laughs> straight down the drain, people. <laughs> <laughs> There's one of those things that we will say, yes, get rid of that out of your yeah. uh, vocabulary. <laughs> flush it. And there's a difference between judgment and comparison. We are in a culture of so much social media and our, and we are judging ourselves against others. We're comparing our lives to what we think other people's lives look like. Or we're, mm -hmm. as women, a lot of times we compare our weight. Oh, she's skinnier than I am. I want to be skinnier. You know, you're judging yourself as not good or not healthy or... Maybe you would like to lose some weight because it's the healthier choice, but it's a, the way you talk to yourself about it and not judging yourself for having eaten ice cream every night, which is totally how I put on weight. If I eat ice cream at night, that's it. I'm <laughs> like five pounds heavier the next morning. <laughs> but if we're choosing these healthy lifestyle choices and we're choosing healthy words and we're, this is really what we're trying to get at is instead of judging yourself to become the observer of yourself mm -hmm. and Absolutely. to see yourself as uh, having choices and choosing the best in alignment, discerning the, the best alignment frequency vocabulary for you. What's the highest frequency of vocabulary that you can use? And I don't know if that's the right way either, but I'm just going to go into the work I did with the girls this week. Um, it was kind of shocking. I, I said, girls, let's just make a list of negative self-talk. And it, it spilled out of them so fast. It was like, I suck. I can't do this. I'm tired. I, I'm no good. Um, and I was just writing as fast as I could. I was like, whoa, okay, let's take a deep breath now. And and one of my girls said, wow, imagine if somebody just heard us saying all that, how they would think of us as such <laughs> negative people. I'm like, yes, but thank goodness we're not. So let's go ahead and make the second column here. <laughs> and it was beautiful, Alicia, the words that they came up with uh, to counteract those thoughts because we have those thoughts. Um, it, it and, and it takes a conscious effort to switch them. So the... And like you just said, witnessing yourself, well, I didn't quite uh, get that right tonight as you're eating your ice cream <laughs> <laughs> or, or as, as you're up till midnight again, or as, um, you know, you, you fell down the mountain or like I was just telling you, sometimes I, I have to make very intuitive decisions on my snowboard and once in a while I make the wrong one and I'm like, oh, dang it, here I am marrying this tree. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but it, I don't judge myself. I just say, oh, made a bad decision there. I'll do better in these next 25 turns. And that's what the girls came up with was, well, I'll do better next time or I need to keep trying. Well, I'm, I'm still not very good at that, am I? You know, an awareness, a, a witnessing of, yeah, I guess I need more time with this trick, you know, and it's just a beautiful honoring of the process that we all are on every single day. The, you know, the old age old quote, it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. And so here we are on this journey, trying to talk positively. Um, and I know we were going to try this little moment of breath. So if you can say the five negatives, you know, um, I, I've, I suck. I'm no good. Why do I even bother? Um, whatever self deprecating things you might be familiar with, say those things and then go ahead and take a deep breath. And when I did this earlier, I couldn't, it was like friction in my chest. I wasn't mm -hmm. able to breathe into those words where then I shifted and I said, I'm trying my best today. I am doing what I can. I still need more time to learn this. And then that breath went all the way through. Oh, I'm getting chills. Woo! Um, all the way through to my toes, to the depths of my, my ovaries, to the crown of my, my head. It was just like, aha, <laughs> that's, that's where I want to sit. That's the feeling of alignment and openness and connection with the true self. Because I think that those negative words, when we say, I'm no good, I suck, that is not your true self. Mm -mm. It's not no. your soul's alignment. That is not your heart-centered awareness. So mm -hmm. these little moments of, 
you know, if I breathe into something that I self-talk or say out loud to someone else, is that really true? Is this in alignment with my inner truth? Or is there a way to shift that into a more positive light? And you can change your language. And Denise Lynn says this in Soul Coaching. If you change your language, you will change your life. And I think... Don Miguel says the same thing. If you can honor that one commitment of being impeccable with your word, not gossiping about others, uh, making positive choices with your language, it will change your life and you'll feel so much more aligned. Absolutely. And one that I had to catch myself um, using was sarcasm. I would, I would insult myself in a sarcastic way. Mm. just to avoid the truth that I wasn't particularly living up to my best ability because we do know deep inside of our souls that we are capable of being this spectacular, as I've said in other episodes, this this diamond, this shining um, light, shining beacon. And we all have that capacity and that capability, but we have layers of whether it's from your childhood or maybe it was a teacher or a coach or somebody who didn't have faith in you or probably didn't have faith in themselves and took it out on you. Um, And so you've got those layers and it's time to swim out from under that, everybody. And, And today, start right now, and this is where I'll probably start crying, but just say, I am worth it. I am amazing. I am more amazing today than I was yesterday. And even if it's the little fraction, then yeehaw. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, go yeah. back to episode three and listen to saying yes to you and feeling into your self-worth and then shift your language to align with that feeling. So this is a practice and we're trying to help you to start to see that when you take that place of the sacred observer, I like to call it, I got that from Denise Lynn and I use it in soul coaching when we talk about feeling different, when you see yourself from that viewpoint of spirit, the way God would see you, how, you know, is this really a judgmental thing that we want to align with a spiritual belief that we're being judged at the end of our lives like this. I think really it's like you said, it's that inner awareness of, can I live with myself every day being this way? Is this how I really want to be in the world? Mm -hmm. There's like six things I want to say right now. Um, (laughs) One, I'll quickly, it's a huge topic, but that we have the power of our voices that we aren't silenced. Feminine voices have not always been celebrated. And they're still, we're still shifting that. But when you can use your voice, please use it with grace. Please use it with beauty. Please do not gossip. Please do not cut down others. And let me shift that actually, because when I'm coaching, I try not to tell the girls what not to do. You know, if I say to them, stop bending your legs what they hear is bend your legs, you know, stop flexing your feet. That's what they hear. So I'm going to say this instead. <clears throat> this is like a live action <laughs> 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 right now. Um, please be kind and please support. And if you witness somebody doing something that triggers an emotional reaction, look inside yourself before uh, attacking them or say, wow, their success makes me feel jealous. Huh. I wonder why. And, and, and just take a look at yourself, take a look at yourself. And then <laughs> so, Michael Jackson mirror song, right? Look at the mirror. Yes. And make a change. Make a this change. Is- <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. It's all written on the walls, people. <laughs> That's right. Um, and so that leads me into the topic of emotional daggers and the concept of, well, you know, between you and I, blah, 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 blah. That stuff is still there. I know that you can say, but I'm only saying this to my best friend. We were in closed doors. Energy has a strength to it. And you can be throwing emotional daggers at your neighbor when you're talking about 
how they're so annoying and they don't cut their grass the right way or whatever, that has an impact. People can feel that. And if you're an empath, my gosh, you're like, "Uh (laughs) uh-huh, I know what you're talking about. (laughs) Shield up, everybody. That's the power of the throat chakra. And especially our voice, it has vibration. That's how it Mm -hmm. travels. That's how sound travels. And it actually does affect the surrounding areas, even if it's halfway around the globe. It's interesting Mm -hmm. how gossip and negativity and judgment when they're out in the world like that, it, it festers and it's, you might even feel it. If you think someone's talking about you like that and you just said shield up, let's give an example here where if you Take your energy fields, feel it from your heart, put this bubble of light around you like you've got a level of protection where if people are talking about you negatively, it bounces right off Mm -hmm. like a ball off of a wall or like a... What would be another great example? I mean, that that bubble is you can let good energy in, but you can set an intention that (laughs) I'm rubber and you're glue. It (laughs) bounces off of me, right? And it goes back to you. (laughs) But that's the truth is that those emotional daggers will come back to you. And so if that that's what triggered me when I was like, oh, that's the why. If I say something negative, it's going to come back at me. Ooh, I okay, I got to stop that right now. You know? So true. And I, th- I think even more so I've been studying um, in this shamanic course and looking at crystals, which I know you have a lot of uh, I love the energy of about. crystals, yes. <clears throat> and crystals only work in high frequency. Crystals, yeah. they, they only accept it. So when you set up your, your three feet of space or six feet, if you need that, we all, we all understand what six feet of space is now, which I'm thrilled about. I'm like... Thank you, COVID, for teaching everyone what a six-foot sphere looks like. Um, Hold your level of frequency so high that that stuff can't even penetrate. It just can't even come in. But also, put it out. Only put out that high level. Let's get into a few more examples, though, of of more like... Ways that you can shift your... I mean, even if you're feeling lonely, you can shift that into saying, I'm open for love. Mm. there's so many little, little vibrational frequencies you can feel into. If you don't like it, find another true, truer way to say it so that you feel more ease, more happiness. What example were you going to say, Shelby? I was thinking about the F-bomb and (laughs) 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 it's... I love saying it. it's like my accent word and I've been, I've been really having a conversation with myself about it, but if, if I should continue using it, like it's so, I don't know. Anyway, we're um, careful not to use it here just because yeah, we are careful yeah. not to use it around small children, but yes. there is an amazing Netflix if you haven't seen it on swear words and oh. how they really help us accentuate things and use it's amazing. But of course what you're going to say, we're not using this against people. We're using it more no, as a no. exclamation I'm going to watch that movie. I really, I really have a conflict with it. So thank you for that. Wow, I'm learning so much. My hesitation, or I, I get a little frictiony, is when I see people saying, like, F COVID or F this year or F 2020. And I'm like, what? Like, I, I think it's because I've been practicing sitting in gratitude so often that she just tells something to F off. It's that um, dagger again. You're just shooting this wicked, nasty arrow out into it. And you're like, well, do you want to say anything else about it? Like maybe thank you for this. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so I, I, we don't need to talk about it a lot. I just wanted to throw it out there that it's something to consider. And you're about to just double flip off some situation. Back up and go, is it teaching me something? Is, is it in my face for a reason? is should I be like, thank you for your courage? Because sometimes people drive me nuts, but in reality, they were the courageous soul to come forward and stand up to me and teach me that really hard lesson I needed to learn. So I'm like, oh, I see you and your purpose is clear. Who deep breath. Thank you so much. You know, and yes, well, and, and I'm re- it's received and it's learned it instead really... of just, mm, does show us that everyone can be a teacher. Any moment can can be that beneficial, supportive, helpful 
you know, even just self-awareness and, Mm -hmm. and I love that actually that I think we were going to talk about, we've both had two divorces and Mm -hmm. the negativity that is used or spoken about divorce seen as a bad thing. Failure. (laughs) That's the way people see it sometimes. And we have a different experience with it. We've both chosen this path for, uh, reasons around growth and learning and very different, you know, in the, I'm sure in your two divorces and, and mine, they're, they were very different, but, um, they probably all are. <laughs> yeah. Yes, of course. But that letting go of, um, and honoring that the, it was a contract. It was a soul contract as well as a marital contract and recognizing that, we've grown apart or we've grown differently. Um, I am allowed to change. Um, I am, you know, even my son said, mom, do you think you're afraid of commitment? Do you think that's why you're getting a a second divorce? I said, you know, I don't think it's that. Um, It's just that I've learned that we're different and I want to stand up for myself and what I feel I need. And it's just, again, going back to the the Catholicism and that divorce is a sin. And even though it's much more accepted now, there's still a little bit of residual guilt, you know, around it. Sure. That was a, you were domesticated to believe that you were taught that. And the way that I like to think about this commitment of partnership is that we have to also be committed to ourselves, right? Back to mm-hmm. saying yes to ourselves. What is it that I need that I'm not getting? And that even though I've communicated to my partner that I need, and maybe they're not capable of meeting that need, this is not where we both align anymore. And then we go our separate ways. Yeah. I advocate for people choosing what's best for them and not acquiescing to always being always doing what the other person wants because I think you are not afraid of commitment you are all in and you try (laughs) your hardest and then when you decide actually I need something different than this is when both of us have stepped out and said this isn't working yes and I think just to keep it a short story I could have in my second marriage done the F-bomb and and walked away. And I really wanted to integrate, um, because I really loved, I love my second husband. We love each other immensely, but we we both came to a place to say we're not feeding each other in in the right ways, from the right wells. And so we have come to a really good place of kindness and respect for each other. And I'm, I'm proud of that. It took a long time. Uh, it took a lot of reworking my mindset, his mindset together, witnessing each other. It wasn't always easy. It it wasn't, it wasn't with ease, but it, it really makes a difference now. It's such a level of compassion for each other. And I know that's hard and not a lot of people uh, have that opportunity. Mm -hmm. Um, And sometimes this is a great segue. Sometimes speaking your truth is not going to be received or even it's going to be dangerous to speak your truth. So that's where you have to use discernment and say, I want to stand up for myself. I want to speak my truth. I want to use my, my, I am words, but I will be put into a dangerous place so that, because it's going into a lower frequency. So that's when you have to take a different uh, path. It's true. You don't always have to speak your truth. I mean, I think Mm -hmm. some people take this really aggressive stance of, you need to hear me. I have to say this. And sometimes that's not the best and the, or the right platform or place or person to make Mm -hmm. that statement to. Sometimes we do need to hold our truth and just know it deeply within and use the ease and grace and kindness as much as possible to come to, um, more of a conscious um, communication yeah, and harmonize. <laughs> I mean, you and I are both in that pl- plane of, of choosing harmony 
over? That's my New Year's resolution. It's been discernment for two years, but this year it was harmony. So Ooh, I love it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, how do we do this? I, we just said conscious communication. Um, and Alicia and I, we both recognize that not everybody is on this path. Uh, you might be listening to this saying, oh yeah, everybody around me is conscious and this is easy for us to do together. Or you might be like, wow, Alicia and Shelby are the first people I've ever heard speak this language. And so you might feel very alone in your group of people. Um, And so there's some unraveling that you're going to have to do. And like Alicia and I both have had to use our discernment and find the people that vibrate at our frequency, at this level of consciousness, at this level of kindness and support and faith versus fear and doubt and ugly, you know. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, recognizing where you are growing to and and taking, a, what do they say, taking stock of what you have around you. They say the five people closest to you is a really, or that you spend the most time with, is a good reflection of who you are. So if you've got some really negative people in your life and you're spending a lot of time with them, then that is going to have an effect on you and how you are in the world. But if you're doing this work and you are becoming more conscious and, and more spiritually minded to bring in these concepts into your life, to catch yourself, to live this life like, like we're talking about, that we've been on this path for 15, 20 years ourselves, it does take the awareness that you're going to grow into new connections with people, that you can reach out to new communities. We have a great community that we invite people into. If you're into this, we have Wednesday night moon circle around the new and full moon. Mm -hmm. We've got the soul coaching tribe of people that are consciously doing that 28 day program together and, and growing and reflecting in a group so that we do have that Mm -hmm. community and, and support because that's important. Yes, and and what you'll be able to witness in those groups or um, in your own self. Uh, my, as I brought up already, this shamanic course I'm taking. It's uh, Puma Freddy Kispe Singona, and he brought up this amazing concept that we do not have to suffer. It's like you either you either learn your lessons or you suffer to learn them, and he's saying that's a, that's an old concept and let's toss it. I'm paraphrasing, but, um, he's basically saying that what we, what we don't learn from love, we can learn from unconditional love. Mm -hmm. And to me, as I've probably mentioned, you are such an example of unconditional love to me. You reflect that back to me. Um, I never feel like I've failed in your eyes. I always, know that you see me as a, a woman who's trying her, her best and falling on her face <laughs> once, <laughs> once in a while. Um, and I know I've used the word fail in our previous episodes. And I, you know, it's a funny word because, you know, I hang out with a lot of kids and they're like, ah, oh, fail, fail coach Shelby. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, it is a fail, but it was a try too. You know, it was an effort. It was a one step towards success, one step closer to success. But with, with Puma, what I feel like he's saying is you don't have to, to struggle anymore. You can literally say, I'm inside of this with faith. I'm not inside of this with fear. I'm not going to fight against my progress. I'm going to support myself in my progress. So whatever it is that you're doing and trying to do, unraveling a relationship or getting a new habit, please have faith in yourself and keep saying those words. And, And let's say you're just already perfect and life is wonderful for you, but you're raising some children here that are learning this and you have to witness them. Mom, I failed at that. Or mom, I just suck. And keep, keep uh, encouraging and coaching them. I do it every single day, so many times a day. And now it's kind of cool that we have this giant list on the board. I look at my students and I say, go read the board. And they're like, oh, you're right. (laughs) I love that these kids are becoming aware of those negative statements oh, yeah. that they're saying to themselves or to to you to each other. 
It's the practice. It's constant. I look at them, I go, what was that? And they're like, and they'll repeat it. And then I'm, I look at them, I go, oh, oh, right. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's automatic. It really, it's a, it's a whole shift, a big one. So, oh, deep breath. <laughs> I love this conversation. I am so grateful to get to have this concept and have been using this concept for myself. And when my beloved friends and partner catch me when I'm still not speaking in the highest integrity that I wish to, uh, when I love that, you know, like just what, what did you just say? Or, you know, if you're trying to work with your family and your friends and on this concept, you can ask them to call you out on it when, when you notice that we're not speaking with the most unconditionally loving or accepting of ourselves or of others behaviors or, you know, it's, yeah, and it's not out of judgment. It's just because I love you so much. I'd like you to be the best you can be. So shift your words, woman. <laughs> yeah, call me out on it. I love that. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, one of the last things I I've, I want to share is just like when you, um, and I know you had a quote on this, but like when you speak, is it contributing to the world? Is it if your words were like a river and they, you could watch them leave your mouth and go out into the world, what color are they? Are they sparkly? Are they like heavy, like a rain cloud? Or are they like light and full of a energetic Shazam, you know, like even the ones in your head, like really take, like give yourself a little test for the next two hours and, and see what you think, see what you say, uh, see how you react to watching somebody be successful in front of you and, and become aware. Like you said, um, what'd you call it? Witnessing the soul coaching, the soul coaching, sacred observer, sacred observer. Be, yes. That's actually, yeah, that's day four of the 28 day program. You get into spending the whole day just as the sacred observer, noticing your thoughts and your words and I would love it if everybody could take a day and, and just start to notice it. See, see what comes out of your mouth. See what mm -hmm. you start thinking and, and noticing about yourself. Some of it is words that we say every day. You don't even mm -hmm. notice. If people ask you, how are you? And you say, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. is, is that what you want to put out in the world? Is that, is that connection with that person? Is that letting them see who you really are and how you're really feeling? If, if you're feeling good, shift it, say, I'm good. If you're, mm -hmm. if you're feeling great, feel comfortable in your body to say, I'm great and, and show others who you are and, and what you're feeling. That's one of the things I think, um, one of our friends said, she just took okay out of her vocabulary. Mm. It's just, let's just be more descriptive about it. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling a little stressed today or, you know, although the day was, going really great in the morning. Then I hit a roadblock that I had a harder time with. And, you know, I'd love to talk about it with you if you've got a minute, you know, really being conscious with our communication is, it's a huge challenge, but it's a huge gift to the world. It's a gift to ourselves. And we wish you the best of luck. We would love to see comments and questions on this topic. Please reach out to us on Facebook, Instagram, leave a note in the podcast episode that you're watching and, and yeah. have a blessed day. Sending yes. so much positivity out to you all. Be amazing. Have faith in yourself. Love yourself. And you are Shazam. <laughs> <laughs> Shazam. There we go. Thank you, everybody. Aho. Aho.